Hello and welcome back to Pass the Turn. Uh, this is another deck tech on one of the Commander Legends pre-cons. Uh, I've already done the Reap the Tides one, so you can go and have a look at that in the description box below. There'll be a link to that as well as potentially one floating up around my head somewhere here. Um, it had a lot of good feedback, um, so I thought I'd just do this one and get this one out as soon as possible as well. So this one is the Boros Equipment Auras Matter deck. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be going through the deck list of that. Uh, not going into too much detail with regards to upgrades. I'd rather just get the deck list out there and my thoughts on the precon in its rawest form. Um, there will be a lot of upgrades that you can add to this um, along the lines. And if I think of them off the top of my head, I'll let you know. But that's what you guys are for. Drop the comment in the section below as to uh, what you should feel should go in this deck. That would be absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, just to just let everybody know. Let everybody know your secrets. So, uh, before we go into it, please make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that little bell notification if you do want to be notified of any future videos. Um, hitting that little bell notification just means that every time we publish something, it'll pop up on your phone or on your device to let you know that we're doing something, uh, which is great. We also have Instagram as well, so you can go and click the little button there on the homepage to navigate to that. And if you're looking to buy any Magic the Gathering products or tabletop products, accessories, sleeves, mats, anything for your gaming room, D&D, go and visit levelupgaming.co.uk um, and use our Pass a Turn discount code. They're a store that got involved with our Pass a Turn Versus series. They're really, really welcoming. And they had a affiliate ready for us when we got there. Um, so, yeah, we're fully going to be promoting them a lot of the time going forward and yeah you get two percent off if you visit them uh, if you use that discount code to so make sure you go and use that if you're looking to buy any products and you're going to be buying products i imagine so use that when you do you'll be helping us directly but let's get straight into this um so the lead singer of this particular deck is wyleth or willeth uh, soul of steel um so this is a legendary creature human warrior it's a red a white and one for a 2-2 with Trample, so three mana in total. Um, and whenever Wyleth Soul of Steel attacks, draw a card for each aura and equipment attached to it. So this commander really just wants to have, if you want to get your value engine going, you just want to have loads of equipment attached to it, loads of auras attached to it, just making it a massive Voltron style commander, but with a lot of value added to it as well, because every aura or equipment you attach to it, you draw a card whenever it attacks. Um, so it's very, very aggro, um, but obviously being in red and white, you're going to have a, a lot of key removal spells as well. Um, and I like the fact that the card draw engine is stapled to this particular card, to this commander that you get in the box. Because Boros, as we know, is very weak when it comes to card draw, card selection, card advantage. So it's good to have a... A hint of that on your commander, basically, as long as your deck's functioning in the right way, getting loads of equipment and auras out. And there's going to be plenty of ways to do that. But first of all, we're going to go through the creatures that come in the deck. So obviously you've got Wyleth, Soul of Steel, but you've also got 11 other creatures as well uh, that you can suit up and uh, smash face with. So the first one is Orcos Explorer. Um, so this costs one white and one other for a 2-2 cat scout. And when it enters the battlefield, search your library for up to X planes cards, where X is the number of players who control more lands than you. Reveal those cards, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Um, so every opponent that's got more lands than you, you will search your library for that many planes and put them into your hand. I don't see why this couldn't put them onto the battlefield, but again, for two mana, that would probably be ridiculously good. But I feel, and we, me, me and Tom discussed this on the last podcast, you can go check out as well, that white needs a lot more help. And I think Wizards do have a plan to help white going forward. Um, but I feel like they should be singing on the same hymn sheet as what the board state is telling them to. So they're never going to be behind. They'll always be mirroring what the person ahead is doing, I, I reckon. Something that they can just be in the same game almost. They're imitating the player that's going ahead or the player that's doing the most stuff. White should be able to catch up to that with a series of cards 
Um, but um, yeah, that's a whole different discussion at uh, another point. But Aura, Aura, Auracos, uh, Auracos Explorer, Cat Scout makes you go and make sure you hit your land drops basically when it comes in. Next, we have Relic Seeker. This is a fantastic uh, reprint. This costs one white and one other for a human soldier. It's a 2 2 and it has Renown 1. So when this creature deals combat damage to a player, if it isn't renowned, it gets a plus one plus one counter and it becomes renowned. So as soon as it's done its master's bidding, as soon as it's bled someone dry with its sword, it then becomes renowned. So it, it becomes a 3 3. And then when this card, when Relic Seeker, uh, Seeker, Relic Seeker becomes renowned, you may search your library for an equipment card, reveal it, and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. Now that is ridiculously good in this sort of deck. You want to be getting those key pieces of equipment. And obviously some, uh, some obvious upgrades to this deck in form of equipment would be all of your swords. Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Fire and Ice, Sword of Light and Shadow. All of the swords from the Scars of Mirrodin as well as Modern Horizons if, you, if you've got them, I know they're expensive. I managed to pull two in one pack. Feast and Famine and Truth and Justice. No, not Truth and Justice. Body and Mind and Feast and Famine in one single Double Masters pack. I never have done such a thing. Even the shop, the shop owner at the time said that is the best pack he had ever seen being opened. And I... I I absolutely loved it, yeah. So if you've got your swords, chuck them in here. Relic so you can go fetch them out when it becomes renowned. Fantastic. Uh, next we have uh, Shram, Senior ed uh, Edificer. Um, so Shram, I believe, is the... Ed That's right, it just took a long time to load. I'm looking at it on Scryfall here. Uh, so Shram is the Dwarf Advisor. He costs one white and one other for a Dwarf Advisor. It's a 2-2. And whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle, you draw a card. So very, very good card draw in Boros in red and white. You're going to be casting a lot of auras, a lot of equipments, and Shram is a huge engine for that sort of strategy. Um, and Shram himself could be a fantastic Voltron mono white commander with an engine built into him. Uh, but again, it's very, very reliant on the fact that you are playing a certain strategy, which in this case is auras and equipments. So yeah, great in this deck. Next we have Brass Squire. This is a three drop artifact creature mirror. It's a one three and it says tap, attach target equipment you control to target creature you control. That is ridiculously good as well. So you could just literally equip a Colossus Hammer simply by tapping the Brass Squire. That is mental source. Um, and there isn't a Colossus Hammer in the deck, so that will have to be another upgrade potentially in there as well, especially if you've got cards in here that will attach equipment at instant speed. Um, that is mental source, so I'm loving that. Uh, next we have uh, Danitha Capuchin Paragon. This is a legendary creature, uh, uncommon. White and two for a CMC of three, and it's legendary creature Human Knight 2-2. Two, two. First Strike, Vigilance, Life Link. So it's got a lot of keywords on there, which is fantastic. So it's a good uh, good creature to suit up with your aforementioned auras and equipment spells. And it also has on there, aura and equipment spells you cast cost one less. So that's a cost reduction for all of your equipment spells and aura spells. So that's basically ramp in this deck. So that's very good. And also you can suit Danitha up to become an absolute beat stick as well because she has first strike vigilance and lifelink awesome loving loving this deck so far really really good i thought my um well on, on the podcast i said that reap the tides would probably be my favorite out of the two but this is i've always wanted to build something like this uh so next we have dual cast a mage uh, so this is red, red, and one. For a human wizard, it's a 2-2 two -two with flash, so you can flash it in whenever you like, whenever you can play an instant. And when it enters the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. So this is a good way of copying anyone's value, anyone's instant or sorcery value. So if you want to copy a Rampant Growth, if you want to copy a Kodama's Reach, if you want to copy a Expropriate or a Wrath of God or whatever you want to do, you can copy it with Dual Caster Mage. So a fantastic way of copying not only your spells, but other stuff that could be useful to you, like ramp and stuff that you don't normally have, card draw, etc. So good include. Next we have a Flicker Wisp. This is an elemental creature. It's a 3-1. It costs white, white, and one for a CMC of three. It's a 3-1 with flying. And when Flicker Wisp enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So a Flicker Wisp. I don't know why that's in here. Um, it's a flying creature that when it enters, it flickers something for you. Obviously, Flicker Wisp. 
Um, but maybe there's maybe there's more synergies with that as we go down the list, but I'll leave that for now. Next we have Ironclad Slayer. This is a human warrior. It's a 3-2, and it costs one white and two others. And when it enters the battlefield, you may return target aura or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand. So maybe that's that's it. That's the flicker there, isn't it? When it enters, you return target aura or equipment from your graveyard to your hand. So Flicker Wisp can automatically synergize with that and making sure that you can recur your um, auras and equipment that are in the graveyard. Next we have a Core Cartographer, another enter the battlefield trigger, so Flicker Wisp could uh, synergize with this also. One white and three others. When Core Cartographer enters the battlefield, obviously it's 2 2, I should add, but that doesn't really matter. When it enters, you may search library for a planes and put it onto the battlefield taps and shuffle your library. So probably white's only source of ramp outside of um, your mana rocks and what have you. Um, but um, yeah. You can see why it's you know it's annoying to be a mono white player um, with no access to green because you could explosive vegetation for exactly the same cost. So green is basically getting two times what the core cartographer is offering here, which is frustrating for white players. Uh, next we have Odrich Lunark Marshal. So this is a human soldier, legendary creature again. So uh, could be a commander in a different deck. Uh, this is one white and three others for a three three, and at the beginning of each combat. So each combat, so that includes when your opponents go to combat, you can then trigger this ability. Each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn if a creature you control has first strike. The same is true for flying, death touch, double strike, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, mid uh, vigilance, menace, reach, skulk, trample and vigilance. So that's great. If you've got some awesome suited up creatures or you've got keyword soup on the table, from Danitha or something along those lines, you can give each creature you control one of those abilities each combat, depending on the situation that you find yourself in. Um, and I think that's awesome. Um, White is more of a combat prowess sort of style fighter, uh, whereas your green is more of a big stompy brute. Your, um, your white cards are definitely more of the keyword soup stuff, so that is awesome. You're gonna have a lot of um, a lot of options for this because you're going to have a lot of creatures that are suited up that have a lot of keywords as a result of the equipment that, and auras that are attached to them. So Odrich uh, finds his place in the deck there. And then finally, the last creature we have is Tiana, Ship's Caretaker. So this is red, white, and three. So five CMC for Angel Artificer, legendary creature. So it could also be the commander if needed. Uh, it's a three, three flying first strike. So as I mentioned, the aforementioned keyword soup available on this card, flying first strike. Whenever an aura or equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end steps. This is just awesome recursion for any auras or equipments that you're putting into a graveyard from the battlefield. Um, you can just get them back as long as Tiana survives till the end of the turn, um, which is just absolutely awesome. Whenever an aura or equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Um, so, correct me in the comments, if, let's say, on um, on your first main phase, you your creature that's equipped, let's say you've got a Danitha that's equipped with a Sword of Feast and Famine, if they were to destroy both the Danitha and the Sword of Feast and Famine, it would then go to the graveyard, right? In the first main phase. What happens then if, obviously because Tiana's ability would then go on the stack, surely, and then if Tiana was to then die, would you still get the trigger? I mean, I'm talking trash now, but I'm sure one of you out there will know what I'm, what I'm trying to explain here. Um, but let's just move on. Let's just move on. We've got 22 instants in the deck. Um, so we've uh, got, first of all, Condemn, so this is one white for an instant. Put target attacking creature on the bottom of its owner's library, its controller gains life equal to its toughness. So that's a fantastic way of just literally getting rid of any horrible attacking creature. And for one mana, is it's basically like a Swords to Plowshares, but for combat only, which is probably just as good in certain scenarios I mean, white just has an awesome removal, doesn't it? Condemn, awesome card. Next we have Expedite. This is an instant. It costs one red. And it says, target creature gains haste instead of turn. Draw a card. A nice little cantrip. 
We've got an awesome removal spell in here. Swords to plowshares. Uh, swords to plowshares. One white. Just simply says, exile target creature is control against life equal to its power. So one of the best removal spells in the whole of magic represented in this deck here, which is great. We've got a braid. So this is one red and one other for an instant. Choose one. A braid deals three damage to target creature or destroy target artifact. So that's good. We've got Boros Charm. So that's a Boros, red and white. Choose one. Boros Charm deals four damage to target player or planeswalker. Permits you control gain indestructible to the end of turn. That's fantastic. Or target creature gains double strike at the end of turn. So really, really good utility on there. You can potentially remove a little problematic value creature. You can make all of your permanents gain indestructible to the end of turn, which is basically heroic intervention. That is that is madness. And then you've got target creature gains double strike at the end of turn, which can also be a fantastic combat trick. If something goes through, hitting for 6, and suddenly Boros Charm and it's hitting for 12, that could be a bit of a game changer. Next we've got Comet Storm. So this is a instant red, red, and X. Uh, and it's got a multi-kicker of 1. So you can multi-kick it as many times as you see fit. Choose any target, then choose another target for each time the spell was kicked. Comet Storm does X damage to each of them. So it's a good way of selectively board wiping some things if you've got the mana to use uh, on multiple targets. Next we've got Dawn Charm. Uh, this is one white and one other for instance. Choose one. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn. Will regenerate target creature or counter target spell that targets you. Uh, so again, a nice little bit of utility which is what Boros needs. It needs all the options that it can get to stop horrible plays going through. Deflecting Palm is the next one. This is Boros uh, again, CMC of 2, red and white. Instant, the next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. If damage is prevented this way, Deflecting Palm deals that much damage to that source's controller. Um, so again, it's another fantastic combat trick. Um, and it's just a, a way of, if someone's stomping in for you know, 20 damage, you can just Deflecting Palm, and they take 20 damage instead. Awesome. I love the fact that this deck's full of a lot of combat tricks as well, which is what Boros is, should be known for. Disenchant, uh, simply uh, one white and one other for destroy target artifact or enchantment. Fantastic. Fists of Flame, so one red and one other. Draw a card. Into the end of turn, type creature gains trample and gets plus one, plus zero for each card you've drawn this turn. So uh, that's interesting. That could be very, very good in conjunction with the commander because your commander is going to be suited up you're going to be drawing loads of cards for the more stuff that stacks on top of him and yeah you could draw a load, load of cards from that fist of flame team of battle rage we've got one red and one other type creature you control gains double strike instead of turn again another fantastic combat trick if an unblocked attacker goes through and it has ferocious as well so that creature also gains trample instead of turn if you control a creature with power four or greater which is highly likely in this sort of deck Valorous Stance. We've got a lot of cheap instants in here, which is fantastic. So one white and one other. Choose one. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn, or destroy target creature with power uh, with toughness four or greater. So just a lot of utility, awesome utility. So you've got protect your creature against destruction, or destroy target creature that's massive. So very good. Speaking of which, Generous Gift, basically Beast Within in white, so one white and two others for an instant. Destroy target permanent, its controller creates a 3-3 green beast. Well, I mean elephant. What's the difference? It's Beast Within in white. Next we have Unbreakable Formation, so there's another instant. One white and two others. Creatures you control gain indestructible in the end of turn. So how many indestructible stuff do we have in here? That's awesome. Just loads of ways to protect your stuff from getting removed is what white needs to be all about. And this is like Spartans! It's fucking great. And it has Addendum as well. No, I haven't heard that in a while. If you cast this spell during your main phase, put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures and they gain vigilance to the end of turn. So it does have, it can be cast instant speed as a trick, but it can also be cast as a potentially backbreaking spell if you do cast it in your main phase instead. So Addendum is, Pretty good ability, actually. Pretty good keyword or or sub keyword, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you can use it as an instant as a combat trick, or you can actually cast it as a relevant spell in your main phase to get that addendum addendum trigger. Uh, next we have Volcanic Fallout. So this is red, red, and one for an instant. This spell cannot be countered. Fantastic, and it deals two damage to each creature and each player. So um, so yeah, that's pretty good for wiping out loads of tokens or loads of small utility creatures and what have you. Mana dorks, elves. Wear and Tear, so this is a split card. 
So you can either cast, or it does have Fuse as well, so you can actually cast both if you uh, pay both the mana cost. So you've got Wear, which is one red and one other for Destroy Target Artifact. And then you've got Tear, which is one white, Destroy Target Enchantment. Or you can destroy Artifact and Enchantment if you pay white, red and one, which I think is very good. And again, this deck is just full of utility cards. Um, so I, th I think this deck's going to be very good. Very good. Um, and we've got White Sun Zenith. Uh, so this is white, 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 and X. For an instant, create X, 2-2 two, two white cat creature tokens. Shuffle White Sun Zenith back into its owner's library. So it's just a good way of creating a um, massive board state full of cats. You can then suit up, potentially. Excuse me. <sighs> Thank you for bearing with me. Next we have Master Warcraft. So this is a two generic and then Boros Hybrid, Boros Hybrid. So CMC of four. Cast a spell only before attackers are declared. You choose which, which creatures attack this turn. You choose which creatures block this turn and how those creatures block. Um, so that's, that is ridiculously good. Again, in a combat matters strategy, Having all of this utility available to you is fantastic. Um, I've never ever played with a deck that relies so much on how combat resolves um, and how you can manipulate the outcome of combat. And I think this is what is so interesting about this particular deck. Uh, and I can't wait to upgrade it because I've just got all the swords waiting. I've got all of the awesome artifacts, our Gentum Armors, Colossus Hammers, all that sort of stuff, Eldrazi conscriptions, all of the horrible aura spells I've got as well, which obviously are definite upgrades for the deck itself. Return to Dust, uh, white, white, and two. For an instant, exile target artifact or enchantment. If you cast a spell during your main phase, you may exile up to one other target artifact or enchantment. So again, uh, sort of an addendum addendum style uh, ability, where if you cast it during your main phase, you can, you can get an additional benefit, but you can also hold it up at instant speed. Just great, great, great deck so far. Wild Ricochet, we got red, red, and two for an instant. You may choose new targets for the target instant or sorcery spell, then copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So that's uh, so that's awesome. So if someone tries to anguish on making you, you can be like, nope, I'm gonna anguish on making that thing instead. Then I'm gonna copy that anguish on making, and I'm gonna do that instead as well, uh, which, is, which is awesome, fantastic. Word of Seizing, uh, so red, red, and three for an instant has split seconds. So as long as this is on the stack, nobody can respond to it, so you can't do anything about it. Untap target permanent and gain control of its end of turn. It gains haste at the end of turn. So, uh, yeah, just a um, oh, basically a act of treason or uh, tre uh, treacherous, um, treacherous, whatever it is, basically, but it cannot be responded to, so that's why it costs a little bit extra than normal. Uh, response, Resurgence, so this is a split card, you can't fuse this one. So you've got Response, which is Boros Hybrid, Boros Hybrid, so CMC of 2. Response deals 5 damage to target attacking or blocking creature, so can just um, potentially just get that extra bit of damage through um, that they don't expect. Or Resurgence uh, costs 1 red, 1 white and 3 others for a sorcery. Uh, creatures you control gain first strike and vigilance at the end of turn. After this phase there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Um, so that is just another way of getting another another combat in uh, with extra value as well attached to it, which is great. So some awesome combat tricks, awesome instants in there, loads and loads of utility and manipulating the combat, which is awesome. Really, really like that. So that's uh, this deck is definitely going up in my estimation so far. Uh, I've never played with Boros, so maybe my view on it is skewed, and maybe that's why I'm finding it finding it exciting. But uh, yeah, leave your comments in the section below as to what, what you feel so far. Yep, so we've got four sorceries in the deck, not many. So we've got Gyres, Immolating Inferno. So this is a red, red, and X for a legendary sorcery. So you can only cast this spell if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. And then it does X damage to up to, um, up to three targets. Um, so yeah, you can only cast it if you've got a legendary permanent out. But it's an X spell that does uh, three targets, basically. So that's quite good. Martial Coup, this is fantastic. Uh, sorcery, white, white, and X. Create X, one, one, white soldier creature tokens. If X is five or more, destroy all other creatures. Um, so it's a good board wipe um, in a way, but it could also be a good token generator as well if you need the creatures out to suit up for auras and equipments. 
Next we have Relentless Assault. This is a sorcery. Uh, red, red, and two. Untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this phase, there is additional combat phase, followed by an additional main phase. Um, so, again, this deck wants you to attack uh, with a lot of your suited up um, and enchanted creatures. And this will allow you to do that again in the same turn. And we've got Winds of Wrath. So this is white, white, and three for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures that aren't enchanted. They can't be uh, regenerated. So another fantastic one-sided board wipe for um, for all of your enemies. Because a lot of your creatures will be enchanted. Um, because they'll have um, a lot of enchantments, auras attached to them and what have you. So that's, uh, so that's, so that's good. Um, although saying that, there aren't many enchantments in the deck. There's only six um and they're not really auras so maybe that's one of the upgrades that need to be looked at a little bit more in um in your own personal build potentially adding more auras in there because there's only six enchantments and there's only a few that are actually auras so first of all we've got Sigarda's aid now albeit this isn't an aura but this is a fantastic include and a must have if you're running any sort of boros equipment deck so this is one white mana for an enchantment and it says you may cast aura and equipment spells as though they had flash so that is mental. And then whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach it to target creature you control. That is ludicrous. Getting round, that is probably one of the biggest um, gripes with equipment is the fact that you have to pay for the equipment and also then pay to attach it to the creature. So if you're just bypassing that equip phase, that is madness. Absolute madness. Cigar's aid, absolute including the deck. Next we have Spirit Mantle. This is an aura, so this is one white and one other for an enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one, has protection from creatures. So that is pretty good. Basically means it can't be blocked, can't be dealt damage, can't be targeted. Um, yeah, that's, that's a very, very good card for two mana. Next we have Timely Ward. This is a great card. Um, so this is actually one of the new cards in the pre-con so this was this is the first time it's ever been printed um in mtg and this is an enchantment aura cost one white and two others and it says you may cast this spell as though it had flash if it targets a commander and it's an enchant creature so it's an aura and it says enchanted creature has indestructible so fantastic another way of instant speeding indestructible onto your commander in this case um but it can still come out as an aura at sorcery speed or um, normal speed if you target something else but again a fantastic way of protecting your commander at instant speed um which is which is great and nice nice uh, nice new card there uh, unquestioned authority is the next one one white and two others for an enchant aura enchant creature when it enters you draw a card so that's good it, prote uh, it pr replaces itself as soon as it comes in and then enchanted creature has protection from creatures again um so uh, the, the the two of the enchantments out of, uh, out of these uh, enchantments or is mean they have protection for creatures which is again messing with combat messing with blocks and attacks and what have you so i think that's that that's the selling point of this deck is it really wants to manipulate combat i've said that about four times now but never mind next we have faith unbroken uh, this is one white and three others for an enchant aura enchant creature you control when it enters the battlefield exile tiger creature and opponent controls until faith unbroken leaves the battlefield and then enchanted creature gets plus two plus two so not only is this a removal spell it's also a buff spell that then fits in with the auras and equipments theme. It's fantastic. Awesome card. Really, really like it. Never seen it before. Definitely gets my approval. Thumbs up. And then finally we have On Sarah's Wings as the last aura in the deck. So there's only five auras in the deck, so you might have to add some more potentially. Um, and this is an enchanted creature, one white and three others. Enchanted creature is legendary. Gets plus one plus one, has flying, vigilance, and life link. So this aura just makes a normal creature legendary, and it gives them plus one plus one, flying, vigilance, and life link. So very, very interesting card. Never seen that before either, but again, fantastic include for the deck. And finally, we have the artifacts and equipments of the deck. So let's go into those now. Uh, so first we have Bone Splitter. Uh, so this costs one mana. And it says equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and it has an equip cost of one. So it's just one of those um, one of those artifacts that you can just get onto your commander to make sure they start drawing cards, give them massive attack buff, and you can get it onto them fairly quickly. That's why it's in there. Uh, next we have Explorer's Scope. So again, another one cost artifact that costs one to equip. And whenever equipped creature attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may put it onto a battlefield tap. So um, that's a good way of 
getting a bit of card um, insight into what's coming up. If it's a land, it goes onto the battlefield, uh, which is which is great because it's potentially ramp in red and white, which is good. But it also gives you an insight into what's coming next. Um, so you can sort of plan ahead, and that's what red and white needs—a bit of insight. Uh, that goes a long way. Uh, there could be a there could be a case made to take out Explorer's Scope and potentially replace it with like Sword of the Animist or something like that. Um, but the insight is quite cool. Watch just bash my mic there. So sorry if you heard that. Um, but yeah, I think the insight is pretty useful. Next we have a Soul Ring. Don't say any more about that. Black Fade, uh, Black Flade, Black Blade Reforged. This is this is great. So this costs two to bring in. And it says, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. Um, so in a lot of games of Commander, that can rack up quite quickly. Not so much in red and white, but still it's going to be give, it's going to be giving your Commander a significant buff because you're always going to be hitting land drops, hopefully. And it says, equip legendary creature, three. So you can equip it to your Commander for three mana, or you can equip it to a normal creature for seven mana, but you probably never do that. Next we have uh, one of the new cards in the deck, the other new card. So in this deck you get obviously the new card, the commander, and then two original cards. That's the that's the trend that they're setting for the supplementary products for commander or EGH players. So that's Blazing Sunsteel. Uh, this costs one red and one other for an equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero for each opponent you have. So most of the time it'll be three, plus three, plus zero. It has an equipped cost of four, and it also has whenever an equipped creature is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any target. Um, so it's a great uh, artifact for not only deterring attackers but also deterring blockers. Um, sometimes the uh, the opponent will just let you go on through because if they do damage to your equipped creature, it's then going to deal damage to their face or one of their key creatures or something else. Um, it can be a very, very good tool to have, especially if you've got all those combat tricks in your deck as well, which gives stuff double strikes at the end of turn or uh, give you buffs at the end of turn. Um, and it's it's just a, it's just a good card, although it's a bit of a disconnect because obviously why left Soul of Steel is wielding the Blazing Sun Steel in his normal commander card, but he doesn't start with the sword. Unfortunately, he has to go and fetch it for some reason. It's a bit of a disconnect. Next, we have a Boros Signet. So we def definitely need this in the deck. So two drop artifact, pay one, tap it, add Boros to your mana pool. Hero's Blade, this costs two generic, it's equipment. A crypt creature gets plus three, plus two. And whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Hero's Blade to it. Otherwise, it costs four to equip. So still pretty good. If you have this out on the battlefield and then you bring in a legendary creature, you can attach it straight to the legendary creature in question, which is nice. Mask of Avacyn, this is a two drop artifact and uh, the equipped creature gets plus one plus two and has hexproof and has an equip cost of three. Uh, having hexproof on your commander is always very very good um, and uh, yeah so just protecting them against single target removal is absolutely paramount if your deck relies on your commander being out and uh, th this deck probably does rely on the commander quite a lot because it is a draw engine in itself. Next we have um, both the rings in, um, oh, I can't remember what the original set was for this, but Ring of Thune and Ring of Valkas. So Ring of Thune uh, is a two drop and so is the Valkas actually. So both the rings have a cost of two and an equipped cost of one. So Ring of Thune gives your equipped creature vigilance, Ring of Valkas gives your equipped creature as haste. And at the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one plus one counter on the equipped creature if it's white, and put a plus one plus one counter on the equipped creature if it's red. So if Wylef Soul of Steel has in fact got both the Reality Stone and the Soul Stone, and has equipped them onto his Gauntlet, he's going to get plus two plus two, well plus one plus one, two plus one plus one counters each turn that the rings are attached to him, and he's going to have haste and vigilance, uh, which is fantastic. So you can just keep attacking without having to hold up for blockers. Well, he, he will be a blocker, basically. I'm talking trash. The longer I go on, the longer I speak trash. Next, we have Swiftfoot Boots. Uh, a massive include for mainly loads of Commander decks. Just spat on my screen there. Uh, two drop artifact. Costs one to equip. Equipped creature has hexproof and haste. Fantastic protection. Next, we have an awesome card, Fire Shrieker. This is a three drop artifact equipment. Uh, it costs two to equip, so it's not too bad actually for the ability. Equipped creature has double strike. Double strike is ridiculously good. I absolutely love double strike. And I'm actually building a um, an attacker 
world render deck. I'm not sure this is going to fall out of focus now. I know I've done that. Ataka world render gives all of your dragons double strike when uh, any dragons attack. So uh, that's I just love double strike. Uh, stay tuned for that Ataka. Next we have Haunted Cloak. Uh, this is a three drop artifact equipment and a quick creature has vigilance, trample and haste and it costs one to equip. So fantastic, loads of keyword soup there. Next we have um, Loxodon Warhammer. This is a fantastic card. Uh, if it would load, I should remember what this does though. I've played this so many times before, um, but um, it's just not loading. Yeah, so three generic mana for an equipment and it says, a crit creature gets plus three plus zero and has trample and lifelink and it has an equip cost of three. So yeah, it just gives you all creatures a huge buff, gives them lifelink and trample. What else do you need? Next we have probably the most valuable Boros card, um, especially for this sort of strategy, and that is Sunforger. So this costs three generic mana. Equipped creature gets plus four, plus zero. It's got a quick cost of three, but then you can pay a Boros, so red and white, unattached Sunforger, search library for a red or white instant card with converted mana cost four or less, and cast that card without paying its mana cost and shuffle your library. So this is a great way of just at instant speed, unattaching Sunforger, going to grab your Source to Plowshares, or your Condemn, or your Expedite, whatever you need, and casting it at instant speed. It's probably one of the best Boros equipments ever printed, and especially in this strategy, where you, you, know, you want to have a lot of equipment attached, but then having the ability to search library for any instant or sorcery with converted mana cost four or less in Boros is very, very good. Uh, next we have, uh, finally, the last equipment of the deck. This is Sword of Vengeance. This costs three generic, and three to equip. And a quick creature gets plus two, plus zero, has first strike, vigilance, trample, and haste. So a lot of these cards could probably be upgraded. If you want to go down the disgusting route, you can have all your swords and stuff in there. Uh, the enchantments um, could obviously be upgraded with um, things like Eldrazi Conscription and other awesome enchantments, which I can't think of off the top of my head because I'm not normally a white player. Um, so this is the first time I'll probably ever play with white and red as a combination to be fair but i'm very very excited about the deck to be honest um it seems like it's it's got a very very particular strategy it's got a load of awesome utility creatures that care about the strategy that you're trying to achieve and it's got a load of good stuff in there and it cares about combat and combat outcomes so i've never played that sort of aggro ball or strategy before um so and i can definitely upgrade it with some cards that i do have in my binder as well so yeah definitely expect to see that on the channel at some point in a gameplay episode um but yeah let's go through the lands very very quickly so we have 14 planes in the deck and we have nine mountains in the deck so they're the basics then we have a Boros Garrison, so that's uh, one of the bounce lands, enters tapped. When it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand, and then later it taps add red and white. We've got Boros Guildgate, so this enters tapped, adds a red or a white. We've got Command Tower, which basically adds a red or a white, um, comes in untapped, because that's your command of colour identity. We've got Encroaching Waste, this tapped add one colourless, or you can pay four and tap it and sacrifice it to destroy target non-basic land. We've got Evolving Wild, so you can tap and sacrifice to search live for a basic land put on the battlefield tapped. Uh, we've got Terramorphic Expanse, which does exactly the same thing. We've got a Forgotten Cave, so that enters the battlefield tapped. It taps and red, or you can pay a red and cycle it to draw a card. We've got Memorial to War, which enters the battlefield tapped. It taps and red, or you can pay four generic, a red, tap and sacrifice it to destroy target land. So we've got a couple of land destruction in here. Lovely. We've got Myriad Landscape, which ends the battlefield tapped. You can tap it, add colourless, or you can pay two and tap and sacrifice to search life for two basic lands, put them onto the battlefield tapped. They have to share a land type, though. Um, we've got Rogue's Passage, which can sneak in some cheeky commander damage, especially in this Boros strategy, which is lovely. We've got Rupture Spire, so that ends the battlefield tapped. When it enters, you have to sacrifice it unless you pay one, and then it taps to add one mana of any colour. We've got a Secluded Step, which ends the battlefield tapped. You can tap to add a white, or you can tap, uh, or you can cycle it for a white, discard it and draw a card. We've got Slayer's Stronghold, so this taps to add a colourless. You can pay a Boros and tap it, and target creature gets plus two, plus zero, uh, plus two, plus zero, and gains Vigilance and Haste at the end of the turn. We've got Stone Quarry, which ends the battlefield tapped, and it taps to add any of our colours. We've got Sun Home Fortress of the Legion. This taps to add a colourless, or you can pay two and Boros, and target creature gains double strike to end of turn. We have to tap it. 
But yeah, we've got Trans Guild Promenade, which ends battlefield tapped. And when it enters, you have to sacrifice it unless you pay one. And it taps to add one mana of any colour. And then we finally have Wind Scarred Crag, which ends battlefield tapped. And when it enters the battlefield, you gain one life. And it taps to add red or white. So absolute garbage in terms of lands. But to be fair, you're running red and white. Um, so you could probably just run all basics and not have any issues. Um, the only things I can think of really that need a lot of one colour are the... Um, oh, what is it? I can't remember what it is now. Uh, there's like a three white cost card in here. A lot of it is... Um, oh, I can't think of it off the top of my head. I'm looking, trying to look for it now desperately. Um, I can't remember what it is now. Maybe not then, maybe not at all. But yeah, if you're running a two-colour deck, you can most of the time get away with uh, just basics. There are a couple of utility lands in there, um, but you don't really, you don't want to be running. You don't, you want to make sure that only like 10% of your mana base, maybe even 5%, is tap lands. Otherwise, you're just going to be running into loads of issues. Especially with Boros, you need to have a fairly efficient mana base. Uh, otherwise you're going to be absolutely falling behind but yeah that is the deck i think it's very very good i think i'm very very i'm very very looking forward to very very looking forward to i'm very looking forward to maybe that is the right word i am looking forward to playing with this deck looking to slip in my own cards that i've got making some upgrades really quickly with some stuff i've got in my binder taking some stuff out um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of these precons that are coming with as supplementary products to the main sets now are just great value for money. Go and pick them up when you can. Uh, go and check out our affiliate link with Level Up Gaming. Um, just visit their website. Use Pass to Turn as your discount code to receive two percent off. I'm sure they'll have this on pre-order or in stock. Um, but if if you're looking to get any other products, go and visit them. Go support your local game stores and make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.